Can't for my wins, I need my ends This life is real, and they pretend Game off the bench, I get it in I get it in, I get it in Can't for my wins, I need my ends This life is real, can't play pretend Game off the bench, I get it in All right, what's up, YouTube? It's Swamp and Stomp here, and uh, today is kind of a special day because we're doing our first out of state hunt together. We're on our way to Kentucky uh, to spend a week up there uh, chasing big whitetails. What's a shooter for you? A doe. What are you gonna shoot? Like what? For sure. Like, like if I guess. A doe, if a nice doe comes in and it gives me a shot, I'm taking it. First day. Yeah. Oh, me too. Absolutely. Like the first doe that gives me an opportunity is hitting the dirt because at the end of the day, I want meat. But as far as bucks goes, so what are you? What I, are your thoughts on bucks? Like it, that's it's kind of like a lot of pressure. I really to have just one buck tag. I really want a, a, a buck and velvet. Um, I mean, the goal is a velvet buck. Velvet and buck and obviously, tag. like, you know, just could have shot a velvet buck in Florida last week. It was, you know, about four inches. <laughs> but, you know, so, like, obviously, you're not looking for that. You want you want something big, something, uh, you know, that stands out. Yeah, uh, I want my first my first uh, Kentucky buck to be, you know, pretty, pretty nice. But... <laughs> Realistically, I, you know, I think it's just going to be like, if a buck comes in and it gets me pumped, I'm going to shoot it. This is uh, Cribs, the Swamp and Stomp edition. This is so nice. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, Ten Commandments. Very nice. Oh, yeah. But it's uh, Corinthian. This is the hunting lodge. Romantic getaway for me and Danny. We can't seem to get our friends to cooperate. We need, we need new friends. Uh, we're taking applications. Good morning, honey. Made you eggs and bacon. Mm. Who cares, man? It's opening day. It's like eight o'clock. It's opening morning. Day one. And uh, we're not in a tree stand. <laughs> uh, basically, our plan was uh, we just wanted to take it easy today, just so we can. Um, you know, not tire ourselves right off the bat because we know we're probably just going to go hard for the rest of the week. And uh, and really, uh, we kind of want to see where other people are hunting on the public land that we're going to. So we're coming in a little bit late, kind of hoping to get there like while they're leaving so we can kind of figure out where people are at. Came into this area that we scouted pretty hard, found some good sign. Had a whole plan. I was going to sit over one field, Danny was going to sit over another field, come out here, there's a dove shoot going on in one of the fields, so now we're kind of like, I guess we'll go sit by the same field, so we're probably going to end up sitting like 50 feet away from each other, overlooking two other fields that are not getting shot at right now. Walking to the backside of this dove field, they're about to start shooting up. 
and uh, I got a camera set up back there. I'm gonna go grab it. Kind of sucks because there's a really nice bug bed back there. Kind of excited to see those pictures. So we'll see. We'll see if I was right about that bug bed. guys so we're finally making it back to the woods um, we're actually just gonna go run around a little bit and pick up some of our stuff that we have in this management area and then um, from here we're gonna go to the other place and where we have cameras pick those up and just kind of pick a random spot to sit on for the evening and then uh, tomorrow morning we'll be back here for our first morning sit all right so here's the deal um, we're at this second spot that we were at in our scouting and uh it's prime time right now like we've already seen deer up on their feet on the drive over here there was a bunch of deer out and about so uh we're walking in um, and basically still hunting our way in i'm gonna go up one ridge that overlooks uh some of the fields that are on the east side of this place and danny's going up another ridge that's on the other side and the hope is that, you know, while we're getting these cameras, we might see some bucks hanging out in the fields um, and kind of get an idea of where they're hanging out. Uh, that way we can kind of go and set up on them in the future. So anyway, I'm gonna go scale this cliff and uh, see if I can find some deer. There's a doe like 35 yards in front of me on the same trail staring this way because it hurt me like uh, making noise as I walked. Uh, it still doesn't know I'm a person, so it's just kind of watching. It probably thinks I'm another deer. It looks like it's going to try and come over here. I could easily shoot this deer right now, and all we'd have to do is roll her right down this hill, and we can drive the car to right there on the road. I want a buck. spook it out without without it knowing what I am. We're out here collecting the cameras from the second day. Um, I don't know if you can hear that one mark somewhere over there. Apparently he's scaring a bunch of deer. I can hear him blowing from here. But check out this view. Alright guys, oh there's some deer right there, as soon as I started talking, I'll be up, I see them, I'm gonna go cut them off. If you can hear me over this annoying ass bug right here, but um, got a pretty sweet setup on my right side. 
I've got some good woodlands over there. All around me. It's pretty open, so if something comes through, I got a good shot range. I can shoot probably to 50, maybe even 60 yards in a couple cases. And then on the other side, over here, I've got a field, and this is actually part of the field where we saw that big buck, those two big bucks. They were on the other side, but Danny's down to the right of where you're looking right now. So, I've got my wind blowing off of the field, like kind of straight out in front of me. So I think I'm in a pretty good position. The wind's blowing over that way. So, I think I'm in a pretty good position to potentially get a shot. Alright guys, so the dove shoot just started. There's tons of shots ringing out. So, and I just got set up. I'm gonna keep my eyes open. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat's kind of dry. I'm gonna keep my eyes open because I got a feeling some deer are gonna start moving through here just to escape all that commotion. Got my crossbow so I can make a quick shot. This might get really good. So. I just checked the first camera that I put out when we came in here. A little bedding area that's down by this uh, little lake down here. And uh, five days ago, a giant, giant, awesome looking 10 point in velvet stood in front of the camera for a while and just kind of danced around, showed off his rack. <laughs> that thing is a stud. If I can get a shot at him, I'd be ecstatic. Oh, I'll be honest, the place I'm at, I'm not super excited about it. It just, you know, I just kind of went in blind because of all these dove shooters. So, but I'm pretty sure in this phase of dove shooting, they're not gonna be shooting in the morning. So I'm thinking about going down to that spot where that big boy's hanging out in the morning. Seeing if I can't get a look at him. But um, I'm going to stay where I am for now. My, uh, <clears throat> my instincts have been right before. And when I looked at this spot on the map... I just had a feeling that deer might move along the edge of this field. Um, so I'm just gonna stay here. Honestly, if a doe comes by in range, I'll shoot it. I'm trying to get meat. Um, I'm not gonna shoot a little buck today. But as the days go on, a buck presents itself, I may just take the shot. But for the time being, I'm really just looking to shoot a doe and looking for a big buck. So, I'm going to stay put, eat my sandwich, still got many hours of daylight. my uh, first time actually using DRT to hunt and uh, it's probably the highest I've ever thrown that throw ball um, man that was so frustrating because uh, I kept getting the throw ball on other limbs and then I would get it over the limb that I wanted to get it on but too far out on the limb 
and then there was other branches coming off so I couldn't get the string back to the actual crotch. It was just, what a mess, man. It took me a solid hour to get up to my hunting height um, from starting to throw the, maybe two hours, from starting to throw the uh, throw ball to hunting height. I practice this quite a bit in my yard, but it's very different on a pine tree. The camera that I got here, that we put up here, had a bunch of does on it, nothing really major. So, hopefully once a, one of us gets a chance at something, or at least we're able to see where the deers are moving through, so we can reset them for tomorrow. So, it seems like the dove shoot has kind of stopped. <clears throat> I heard a lot of people talking, like they were packing up and stuff, so still hearing a couple shots, but it's finally quieted down enough that we can actually hear the woods. It's like 6.45. <clears throat> Shooting time ends at 8.30, so still got a couple hours. It's prime time. No idea what lives around here, but I'm sure there's some does. So I'm really just hoping a doe comes by. That would be awesome. I just shot a doe. It's a big doe. <laughs> like she looks like an old doe. Like she snuck up on me. I was messing around on my phone. I was looking at a spot I might want to go hunt tomorrow. And all of a sudden she was standing right there like 20 yards. I just shot a doe. All right, sounds good. I, I reloaded my crossbow. If, if you wanna stay for like 20 minutes, but then again, it's gonna take a while to get her back to the truck, so maybe we should just get going. not seen the area so I have no idea so what happened so I was like sitting up there and just nothing was happening you know and then I just like looked to my left and this deer had walked you know like probably 30 yards in an area that I could have shot at it off to my left and I didn't see it at all and I just see this blob all of a sudden I look over and and just like me turning Still was on high alert. Just me turning and looking at her, she quickly turned around and looked up at me. So I stopped moving. And then she put her head down and I grabbed my bow and pulled it up over my lap. And my next move was gonna be to reach up and turn on the camera. But when I put the bow up, she like looked and she started kind of, you know, looking for me. So I just like made a quick call and just put it on her and shot but she was quartered away quite a bit like pretty hard and I, I remember seeing the furthest back rib like you know right back here and I aimed for that rib and if I hit where I was aiming it should have gone straight through the heart um, but it was all so quick you know I really don't know what happened but I did hear her I mean, she took off running like she was hit and, you know, crashed through the bushes. So, I think I got her. But, let's go check out the arrow. Alright, so we just found the, the bolt. Here it is. You can see all that blood on there. Oh yeah, that's good blood.
What do you have on the end of that? I'm shooting the uh, G5 dead meat. Expandable three-way. Looks like heart blood, right? Dark red. Yeah. Smells bloody. All right. Let's so, open here. She was standing right here. First Kentucky big. buck down, or deer down. This is a big doe, dude. Holy shit. This is a big doe. Is that there? Oh, look at that shot. Perfect. Dude, she's a big doe. Holy Huge shit. doe. Oh my god. Dude, dude she's huge. I'm suddenly <laughs> regretting this decision. So here's the deal, Danny and I, I guess, didn't really expect either one of us to shoot a deer tonight, so we are unprepared for this. We don't have a cooler, we don't have a tarp, we literally have the deer tied to a game card sitting in the back of our rental van. I am sorry for anybody who works at the yeah. rental company. <laughs> that's gonna have to deal with the stench well we kind of forgot about the fact that because of COVID-19 none of the Walmarts in this area are still open late at night so everything was closed so we had to improvise and uh, this is what we came up with <clears throat> we uh, Bought a bunch of ice, created a little corral, <clears throat> covered her with ice, laid the car mats on top of her. It actually worked pretty good. I mean, the only part that's not in the cooler is like, you know, the parts we're gonna cut off anyway. So she's nice and cold, and we're gonna we're gonna eat some breakfast and take her to the. Uh, the guy who's gonna clean it up for us. Thank you guys for watching the first episode of our Kentucky hunts. This was a great trip for us, you know, our first out of state hunt. And after starting it off shooting this big doe, you know, it could only get better from there. And to our surprise, it really got better. So uh, make sure that you're subscribed. Uh, there's gonna be more episodes coming out uh, in the next couple weeks. And there's a little sneak peek coming up uh, in just a few seconds of uh, what next week's episode is going to look like. Uh, but if you got a minute, if you guys wouldn't mind going and checking out our Patreon page, um, you can find that at patreon.com slash swampandstomp. And this is a place that you can go to make a small monthly donation to help us take the channel to the next level. And by doing that, you're really helping us out. But we're also going to give you stuff for it. Like, for instance, we'll send you some... Uh, some cool sticker packs. We've got uh, car decals. 
Um, we do giveaways just for the Patreons, but you also get a whole bunch of extra entries into our quarterly giveaway. And right now at this moment, uh, we're giving away a Arrow Hunter saddle, but like I said, it changes every uh, quarter. So you can click up here to see whatever it is that we're giving away at the time that you're watching this video. And with that, I want to thank everybody for supporting Swamp and Stomp and we'll catch you guys next week. Money, dude. Money. <laughs> that deer is dead. Oh my god, look at that rack, dude. Dude, that is a big deer. Holy crap.